Hi everybody, it's uh, Sunday morning, Obvi, and uh, the weather's uh, really beautiful uh, out here in my neck of the woods uh, in the uh, Long Island, Connecticut, New York City, southeastern New York, New Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania area, and I want to spend some time enjoying it, and I think you should spend some time enjoying it. So here's what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, what we can expect for the eclipse in terms of cloud cover, and I'm going to take you all around the country. Then we're going to do a quick look at the tropics, uh, which uh, has uh, suddenly uh, we've seen this uh, development of hostile conditions across uh, much of the tropical Atlantic, and I'll show you why. It's uh, another one of these, uh, actually a couple of these big upper lows sitting out uh, over the Atlantic Ocean, uh, producing uh, strong wind shear, and that's uh, impacting the two tropical waves that are east of the, uh, northeast of the Leeward Islands, one north of the Leewards and the, one, the other one east. And uh, we also have uh, what's left of Harvey, which degenerated into an open wave yesterday. Um, looks like the thunderstorm activity has uh, increased during the overnight as it moves westward into the central Can uh, Caribbean, where conditions are a bit uh, more favorable for redevelopment, but it's pretty far to the south, so I don't know how much northern latitude that's going to get. So we're, that, that's pretty much what I'm going to do today. I'm going to uh, keep this uh, re re relatively short, under 10 minutes, and then uh, tonight at 9 o'clock I will do a full live stream and we'll get into all the models because it does look like we're uh, seeing uh, uh, some changes uh, overall with what's going going to be going on across uh, North America and uh, the upper pattern and uh, the setup maybe of some uh, a strong onshore flow uh, late uh, next weekend and beyond and there might be some tropical complications with that I think we could just openly speculate on where this is going Wednesday uh, we uh, could see uh, perhaps a severe weather threat for parts of the Northeast and down into the northern mid-Atlantic states. We'll talk about that as well. So I'll cover all that in, in uh, weather model detail tonight. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to uh, switch over uh, to uh, the um, eclipse in the tropics for this morning. Uh, we'll have a, 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 I'll, I'll stick around and chat tonight um, because I want to go out and do some fishing. Okay, so everybody uh, stand by. The solar eclipse on Monday is uh, upon us, and uh, there are folks uh, that are wondering what kind of sky conditions we are going to have, because remember, all it takes is one cloud, and your experience is going to be uh, diminished, or in some cases, if it's enough cloud, cloud cover, it might be ruined. And I know a lot of you have chosen to travel uh, to places where the path of totality is, uh, which is uh, running on an arc from uh, Charleston, South Carolina, uh, toward about Asheville to uh, St. Louis, Kansas City, and then westward to about Portland, Oregon. So you, it's a n very narrow band that's going to see the total eclipse here. And everybody's got spots picked. So let's go through. I'll take you around the country, and we'll see what's happening. What I have up is the uh, NAM model. Uh, forecast for basically for where there are going to be some clouds uh, and this is for 2 p.m. which is about 40 minutes before the uh, peak time so we'll get a general idea notice that there are areas with cloud free conditions but there are patchy clouds being forecast now uh, through uh, much of uh, the northeast uh, down into the mid-atlantic states there are breaks in that cloud cover of course you know, if you could have 50% cloud coverage, as long as the 50% of the sky is the is the, where the sun is and it's cloud free, you'll be okay. But I, you know, I just want you to recognize that there are issues. And if you look back toward the uh, Great Lakes over Michigan, you have a pretty solid overcast uh, going on there. Uh, but elsewhere, I mean, it almost looks like really it's this is a typical August type day considering the uh, air mass that we're dealing with. So I'm going to take you around. Of the country so we'll start it with the northeast and we're going to jump now to uh, the southeastern part of the united states as i know a lot of you were talking about going to charleston and you notice that because of what was left of an old frontal boundary there's quite a bit of cloud cover being generated here along the coast some breaks inland uh, but there's cloud cover to deal with uh, down to florida and and also along the gulf coast although if you go right near 
uh, the, the coastal areas themselves, I'm thinking that you might have a better shot of seeing uh, a large area of clear skies develop. Uh, inland, some breaks uh, across uh, Tennessee, parts of Alabama, uh, back through Kentucky, West Virginia. Uh, the uh, arc of the, the path is going to be, you know, something like this. All right, so just figure where you are either side of that line uh, to, to, to uh, decide. I, I, I was thinking that Nashville is not a bad choice. So certainly, uh, I think it's probably a less risky choice than, say, uh, uh, Charleston or St. Louis. Um, Western North Carolina might not be a bad choice. Eastern Tennessee, Knoxville may be a, 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 a pretty good spot. Uh, looks like it's, you know, in the eastern part of the, I mean, it is in the eastern part of the state. And it looks like in that area where the cloud cover uh, isn't too bad. Uh, so, you know, cons may, uh, con consider carefully if you're making decisions today. Uh, let's go to the uh, north central part of the United States where we do, again, also have some cloud issues here. Uh, cloud issues across Nebraska, uh, parts of uh, for Iowa into Missouri. You can see it here. Also uh, on up uh, through parts of the Dakotas, we've got some scattered clouds. And uh, down we go now to the south central U.S. Now here's a, a spot that opens up in Texas through Oklahoma and southeastern Kansas uh, and into southeastern Missouri. So it looks like there's a fairly large area of clear skies here. But you can see all these clouds, you know, rolling up uh, the uh, east side of the Rockies up into Colorado. Uh, on uh, eastward across uh, much of West Kansas and Nebraska. You know, earlier in the week, uh, it looked like that might be an optimum place uh, in parts of the uh, Central Plains, but uh, it isn't exactly turning out that way. In the northwestern part of the U.S., where are you? Northwest. Okay, in the northwest, it's looking really good. Skies, uh, look at this large area of mainly clear skies, uh, except right along the immediate coast where you have the usual issue of coastal low clouds. But the uh, west is best, certainly Oregon. If you're going up, you know, anywhere up in uh, in Oregon and into parts of Idaho uh, and, you know, and Wyoming where the uh, arc goes, you have clear skies. So you're going to have a really good view there. And in the uh, southwest, uh, we'll take a look. Now, again, here we, we're, we're dealing with uh, a partial eclipse, but still a large area of mainly clear skies, except for apparently some clouds in and around Las Vegas. So they could probably take some bets on whether that's going to actually happen or not. So that 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 pretty well sums it up. Um, you know, you're going to dice roll. A lot of you are going to probably roll, you know, dice roll to, uh, in deciding on where to choose uh, to go with all of this, um, you know. It's a shame if you uh, waited all this time, if you're really into the solar eclipse and the uh, astronomy uh, uh, phenomena, here comes an opportunity that only happens uh, sometimes, you know, you go decades uh, without this stuff happening, this total solar eclipse uh, in your particular area. You know, they do happen uh, enough, but you just a lot of times you have to get on a plane and go to another part of the world to see it. Uh, but uh, we'll, it'll be what it will be. All right, let's uh, just real quick uh, check on the tropics because we have what's left of Harvey, which degenerated into an open wave yesterday, is now south of Jamaica, and there has been an increase in thunderstorm activity overnight. So there is a chance that this thing could wind up regenerating uh, later today or tonight as it moves westward. Some of the models do that, but it, you know it is tracking pretty far to the south, and it's eyeballing uh, Central America here. So we'll have to see whether it winds up uh, veering a little bit to the north and staying in the open, open waters and heading to the Yucatan Peninsula or not. Here's the wide view, and here are the two follow-up waves, and you can see they're not doing very well at all. There's a, there's a lot of shear that's developed across uh, the Atlantic, uh, and uh, when we look at the water vapor imagery, uh, upper lows all over the place. Uh, we've got uh, one here uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, but that's not really impacting uh, the remnants of Harvey, at least that still remains a separate entity. But you've got this new, this giant upper low that's sitting in the South Central Atlantic again. So that's impact, that's having an impact on this particular wave. And we also have uh, an upper low. Uh, you know, it's it's a weak one here, uh, but it is producing a little bit of shear for that uh, wave that is now moving north of uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, and heading northwestward. 
and there is, a, you know, it's still close enough to the upper load of the Northeast that that's actually having some impact as well. So you just don't have very good conditions again. Uh, oddly enough, there isn't a lot of dry air around, which is uh, unusual because we've had so much of it. And even into the deep tropics, the, the, the deep tropics actually, except for two little patches, look fairly moist. But, you know, now you've got hostile wind conditions in the upper atmosphere. So um, you, you uh, change one uh, factor of the equation and it winds up that another factor of the equation winds up being changed. We will give you a, a more complete look <clears throat> at the tropics. I'm going to wait till this evening. We'll do a live cast. Uh, I'll do a live stream later this evening when we have all the day side models in. There are some uh, complications uh, developing maybe in the long range with uh, what's happening with the pattern in the eastern part of the United States and a big high that's going to be coming down out of Canada. So that could create some rather interesting scenarios uh, depending on one thing or another. And of course, we will uh, look at the Canadian model and have fun watching it uh, wipe out the East Coast on a on an almost uh, at least twice a day with its two model runs. I honestly don't understand what ex exactly is wrong with that model. They really need to look at it. Uh, it it's, in it's, it's insane that every single run it will spin up at least three hurricanes and have these you know ridiculous outcomes that uh, just don't happen. Okay, and if they did, we probably wouldn't be around to talk about it. So you know, somebody whoever's in charge of that stuff needs to up in Canada needs to kind of take a serious look at why the Canadian model uh, ha does not handle tropical systems well at all. All right, folks, have a great Sunday. The weather's uh, terrific here in my neck of the woods. I hope it's great where you are. Please uh, take the time out to enjoy it, enjoy your day, and we'll be back with a live stream tonight, uh, probably at around 9 p.m. Eastern time.